morning's copy with is with Winston Groom. And the satellite interview is furnished by National Geographic. Best selling author Winston Groom, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. You are the one who wrote Forrest Gump. I am. <laughs> and now you're back with a new book called The Generals. Tell us what it's about. Well, it's about three generals of the United States Army uh, who thought they made their bones in the First World War, but came to enormous uh, national prominence in the Second World War. That's be General MacArthur, Douglas MacArthur, who commanded the Army in the Pacific, and General uh, George Patton who uh, commanded the, the fighting, uh, fighting part of the army in the North African campaign in Sicily and in the European theater, and General George Marshall, who was the chief of staff of the army, who was charged with the responsibility of keeping those other two guys from imploding mm. because they were very controversial, but they were also very interesting characters. So in all the research you did for this book, what was the most surprising or interesting thing that you learned? Well, there were so many of them. I, one is that General Patton was the richest man in the army. Oh. He, he, he uh, uh, would appear at army posts when he was a young lieutenant with a string of polo ponies and a yacht. And it would not begrudge because he was the best polo player in the Army, and he was the best yachtsman. And he actually participated in the 1912 Olympics in the pentathlon, which is a multi-event thing, sort of a martial uh, uh, event where you have to uh, run and swim and ride horses and sword fight and shoot. And uh, he could do all these things because he was the best sword fighter in the Army, and he was the best horseman in the Army and probably the best swimmer because he used to swim around Catalina Island, which his family owned. Wow. So he, he, was, he was dyslexic, and he, no. could, he learned, he got through West Point, went through West Point, but he memorized every, all the mathematical problems. Instead of solving them, he just memorized the solutions in the same way with liter, liter, literature ex, exercises, essays. He memorized it, and one time he, he, he used to joke about it because his spelling was atrocious, and uh, he made a speech to his men one time in which he said, um, you know, any, anybody can spell a word the same way any time. He says, creative, takes creativeness to be like me and spell it five, six different ways. <laughs> That's a good attitude to have. So why did you choose these three men to focus on in your book? Well, because I think they were iconic uh, in their day. And uh, I don't know what people remember about them. Uh, now, but uh, 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 they were, they were, I hate to use the word larger than life, but they mm -hmm. were, they, they were really uh, almost like gods. Uh, MacArthur, for instance, when he was at last in the Korean War, fired by Harry Truman for not, essentially not obeying orders. He came home to a reception in San Francisco of two or three hundred thousand people and big ticket tape parade in New York. And he addressed the joint, he was asked to address joint session of Congress, both the Senate and the House of Representatives. It was very, very rare that that happens. And they made uh, the, the, what they call his old soldiers that never die speech. And uh, General Patton, of course, was killed right after the war was over, but he, he was uh, revered, uh, I mean, his, his European exploits, he shortened the war probably by maybe a year, mm -hmm. and that, that was very important because uh, we were taking enormous casualties every day. And General Marshall was the most organized person maybe in the history of this country. He was the chief of staff. and. Uh, he did a selfless thing. He could have he could have been taking General Eisenhower's job as the the head of the European invasion, but he didn't do it because President Roosevelt asked him to stay on as the chief of staff. Oh. And he'd always wanted to command a great army in battle, and it was his last chance of his life, and he knew it. But very selflessly, he agreed to stay in Washington and and run things from there. So they, they, these guys, I mean, they, this book is about. Really, uh, it's about character and about courage and it's about patriotism. 
uh, traits that uh, these uh, three men had in abundance. It's just fascinating. It is a great holiday gift for anybody interested in history or biographies or just simply storytelling. So, Winston, thank you so much this morning for joining us to talk about it. Thank you.